barricading the park for two hours, disrupting the group's plans for a candlelight vigil to raise awareness and research funding for childhood cancer. Why? Because of the Secret Service. They said the closures on Pennsylvania Avenue and Lafayette Park were, quote, put into place based on standard Secret Service protocols prior to protectee movements. See, you're not a stakeholder and you're not a protectee. They don't care about you. They don't care about protecting you. They could care less about you. They're going to shut down entire portions of cities when they have a protectee moving in the vicinity of the White House complex. This is the arrogance of the elite shown to us against people who are their parents and their children with cancer. This is what is so incredibly sad about all this is the attitude that they have towards the common man, and it is only going to get worse. Nevertheless, he's putting this out as a common man narrative. We see illegals are hoping that the Marxist Pope will bring an end to deportations. It's an article up on Infowars.com. Talking in breathless detail, the Guardian lays this out. Understand, this is going to be sold as protecting the climate for your children and open borders for the children, but it is all going to be about globalism. Now, of course, the Guardian talks about migration activists. We call them illegals. Hope Marxist Pope will bring into deportations. This is what they said in their article. Department of Homeland Security buses arrive each day and disgorge undocumented immigrants who walk through a cage-like structure from the U.S. to Mexico where authorities arrange trips home, whether elsewhere in the country or often to Central America. Now, of course, the first question we have to ask is, why can Homeland Security protect the Pope, but not our borders? They clearly could if they wished. This is part of an open border. The open borders are part of a globalist agenda, and that's why he is pushing this. They represent this as a humanitarian crisis, as a crisis for families who are split apart by a political border. And that's going to be the narrative that the Pope is going to give us. Not that the families are being split apart by moral failure or the lack of Christ in their life. No, it's because of political borders that they're being split apart. Listen to what they have to say here. Family separation continues to happen. So when migrants are detained, they're separated. This is the agenda that has been sold to us. It's going to be immigration for the children, climate change to protect the children. We saw this with the White House saying, I welcome his holiness pope, deeply admire his decision to make the case powerfully and clearly with full moral authority of his position for action on global climate change for our children and our children's children. That's the way they're going to sell it. That's globalism for the children. Now stay with us when we come back. We're going to talk about the new sexual right of pedophilia. Remember this pope said he thought that there were 2% of Catholic priests that were pedophiles and there were reports that that's why the previous pope was vacated. We'll be right back. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. 
we have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Welcome back. Now, there's a very disturbing report on InfoWarriors.com today. Media promotes pedophile rights. Actually, that media is Salon. The article was by Kit Daniels pointing out some of the things that they said, essentially establishing sexual rights for pedophiles, talking about it as something that is just a, an orientation. Maybe they're not acting on it. Maybe he's celibate. That's what he says, the person who wrote this op-ed piece. For Salon, joining me is uh, Leanne McAdoo. Leanne, that's one of the things that's concerned everybody about the pedophile scandals within the Catholic Church. The fact that uh, the Pope said and was quoted by La Publica, Republica, the uh, uh, largest circulation uh, paper in Italy, was quoted as saying that about 2% of the Catholic clergy are pedophiles. If that's true, there's about 8,000 priests. Right. And that is a very troubling aspect because we've seen that they don't remain. Exactly. They tell say the, they are, but they don't remain. Tell those children that have spoken out about it here and are calling uh, for some justice that they're celibate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's taken them this long to just even admit that this is happening. Well, this so. all ties together with the Pope's visit because mm -hmm. we see this pedophilia expressing itself. Not only now it's coming out in the media. The media is coming out talking about it as if it's some kind of newly discovered sexual orientation, a mm. new sexual right. But of course, we've been talking about this for quite some time. Going back to 2013, Business Insider reported that uh, the Pope's resignation was due to a gay lobby within the Vatican, a scandal with that and with the Vatican Bank. It's very interesting that the Pope is all about shutting down capitalist banks and bank abuses, but there's a lot of reports that there's been a major scandals by the Vatican Bank. Right. as well as predatory gay lobby within the, uh, within the Vatican. Now, this is reported, as I pointed out, by La Repubblica. It's the largest circulation paper in Italy. They don't directly quote from the report, but they do point to the financial and sexual lobbies that have split the church, they say. And then shortly after this pope took uh, office, he was quoted by the same paper as saying that there's about 2% of the Catholic clergy that are pedophiles. He said that uh, those pedophiles would be among the uh, priests, the bishops, and the cardinals. He says, others are more numerous, but no, no, and keep quiet, he said. They punish 
without giving the reason the Pope was quoted by saying. He says, I find this state of affairs intolerable. So there's a lot of signs that this has been going on. We know that there's right. been a lot of scandals like that. We know also that the UN has been involved with it. ISIS has been involved with it. And now we've got Salon pushing this. Right. And this is this is going to be the new oppressed group calling for rights. Uh, here he describes, you know, his discovery of an alternate an alternate sexuality and uh, just basically going on to describe how this all sort of came about. Um, he felt incredibly inferior because he was born with a, a deformity. And when he was about seven, uh, he was molested by a man that he had didn't even know. Well, before and, you go to that, he says, I was born without my right hand. He said, right. quickly set me apart from my peers. But he said, right. that was nothing. And he talks about the, the problem that he had to have a prosthesis and all the different things that that caused him. Like he says, that was nothing. Compared to the final insult the universe would deal me, I've been struck with the most unfortunate of sexual orientations, a preference for a group of people who are legally, morally, and psychologically unable to reciprocate my feelings and my desire. So right. it's a sexual orientation. It's a preference. It's not a crime. It's not victimizing innocent children. It's just simply a sexual orientation, a preference. And of course, then once you establish that repeatedly putting it out to the public, then you can establish that it is then a right because right. we have seen the Supreme Court say that sexual orientation trumps religious freedom. Right. So I'm sure it trumps the informed consent of children. And you have you to respect have it consent. because, you know, now we're, we're being taught to respect it because that's their culture, this is their orientation. And one of the things that I thought was really disturbing is that he talks about when he was 11 and his father was, they had heard uh, uh, some story of um, sexual assault happening to another child and he heard his father saying, you know, they should take those guys out and just crush their genitals. And for him, you know, as an 11 year old, he was like, well, I vividly remember that man touching me. And he said, I hardly felt it warranted that kind of response. Yeah. So here now, now he's going to start advocating on behalf mm -hmm. of these pedophiles, basically saying, you know, I'm not a monster. Just hear me out. Even though he know the reason he chooses not to do this is because he knows that he would be harming a child. Mm -hmm. So he knows this is wrong. He knows that it's it's not consensual. It's hurting a child. Uh, but you know he wants us all to to be okay with it. Well, this has been something that the elite have done for quite some time. We saw what happened with Jimmy Seville. How Jimmy Seville they covered for him multiple times. There were investigations mm -hmm. by people lower down in Scotland Yard. They were shut down by the people who were higher up. After Jimmy Seville died. There was a documentary investigation of what he had done. He's a very uh, obvious pedophile, and it was shut down by the BBC. And, of course, he has connections to the royal family. There's oh, photographs yeah. of him with the Pope. We see that the elite mm -hmm. are always involved in this, and now they want to try to make it normalized. Right. To protect themselves, and I think also, Leanne, to establish this brave new world sexuality that keeps people enslaved. Uh, to the globalists because they are tied up in their hedonism. They don't exactly. think beyond the immediate moment. That's what television is about. That's what the bread and circuses that we ha have are about. It's really like the final days of the Roman Empire, what we're starting to look at here. And one of the titles here is the discovery of an alternate sexuality. Right. Putting it in these objective terms, you have to understand that in the large dictionaries, and I've got a, a very large unabridged dictionary, 650,000 words from the 1950s. And I looked up to see how they had defined marriage, how they defined uh, homosexuality. And you know what? The word homosexuality was not even in that dictionary. The only thing they had was a pejorative term, uh, sodomy. Okay, They added homosexuality about a decade or so after that, and then very quickly went from a neutral, went from a pejorative to a neutral homosexual, then went from that to a positive, saying it's gay. Mm -hmm. That's the way that they move the the uh, normalcy window, right. okay? And and that's what we're seeing happening here now. Right, and that's the, that's how he finishes the article. So please, be understanding and supportive. It's really all we ask of you. Treat us like people with a massive handicap we must overcome, not as a monster. Mm. So this is what Kit Daniel says. This is, this is pedophilia is starting to emerge as the next sexual rights revolution. Yes. And uh, psychiatrists have already begun to advocate redefining pedophilia in the same way that they, like you mentioned, redefine homosexuality. In 1998, the American Psych Psychiatric Association claimed the negative potential of adult sex with children was overstated. 
and that the vast majority of people who report, you know, this sexual assault, they they turned out fine. It was okay for them. Granted, this guy says it turned him into a pedophile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've also seen that in, in not only the cover up of Jimmy Seville, but we've also seen uh, ministers there in the UK mm -hmm. start to push that along with the North American Man Boy Love Association. And then look at what happens with the UN, of course. They're frequently involved in this type of thing. There was a story going back to April 